Major General Ivan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to represent my defense attaché, General Cyril Carcy, on this particular day of remembrance. I would like to recall with you how the past can help us to build a better future for our both nations. In other words, making certain what seems today possible. We must not forget that France was the first ally of the young American nation. France provided military and economic assistance during the struggles that opposed it to the British Empire during these six long years. The meeting between Comte de Rochambeau and General George Washington in 1781 was a great step in the long march to independence, which eventually resulted in the decisive victory of Yorktown. We must not forget that France also provided a significant fleet that defeated the British vessels in the Battle of the Chesapeake Bay, also called Battle of the Capes. As a French Navy officer, I cannot evoke this episode without quoting the name of Admiral de Grasse. Through his audacious and victorious mandarin of 24 ships, he defeated the British fleet sent to rescue the British army trapped in Yorktown. His naval victory helped seal America's independence. As far as my experience teaches it to me, it gives a real meaning to the fights we may undertake together in the coming years. We must not forget the great sacrifices that you soldiers consented in the everlasting fight for freedom of our own territory, especially in the 20th century. The dense and bloody battlefield of Bellewood in 1917, the treacherous beaches and coasts of Normandy, and the freezing months of the Ardennes in 1944 remind us the price of victory. As a response to our participation to your independence war, we owe you our independence and liberty. As a conclusion, I would leave my last words to General George Washington, stating these relevant points. A free man contending for liberty on his own ground is superior to any slavish mercenary on earth. May our commitment to the armed forces ensure our children and grandchildren to live in the free world we were granted. Thank you. The officers enlisted of the command bid you a hearty welcome as we gather here today to commemorate the meeting of Generals George Washington and the Count de Rochambeau on September 20th, 1780, and again in May of 1781. Today, we recognize the 250th anniversary of the first company, your state's oldest continuously serving organized militia unit. The Count de Rochambeau was sent by King Louis XVI to aid the colonies in their fight for independence. The French not only provided over 5,000 men, two fleets, but also urgently needed the arms and e equipment for the battered Continental Army encamped in New York. The first company governor's foot guard was here on this spot on both those occasions to welcome Rochambeau and Washington and provide escort while the two leaders planned the campaign that would ult ultimately lead to an American victory. Just five months after the 1781 meeting, 
would find the British forces trapped on the Yorktown Peninsula between American and French armies and cut off from the sea by the combined French fleet forcing the British commander Lord Cornwallis to surrender his forces, effectively ending the War of Independence. Each year, the First Company Governor's Foot Guard comes here to remember our French allies who came to these shores in our time of desperate need and to recognize the part our command played at that time. From 1771, ensuring the safety of the governor and the General Assembly to 2020, activated during the COVID crisis, to fulfill our humanitarian mission for the Department of Public Health. The first company has stood ready to answer the call and to strive to be an honor to the state. God's court to hear us. And if I feel as though they cannot, then we will stand here shouting until I am sure that they do. Who are we? First Lord! Who are we? First Lord! One more time so the angels can hear us in heaven! <laughs>